The United States, China, and the European Union are three of the most influential economic powers in the world. However, their relationship has been anything but friendly in recent years. Economic hostility and instability have reached a record high, creating a US, China, EU crisis triangle. And I'm not talking about the triangle you might see in some soap opera or reality TV show. This is something that will actually affect your lives. At the root of the issue are a number of complex factors. The US and China have been engaging in trade war, imposing tariffs on each other's goods, and disrupting the global economy. The US has also been urging Europe to take a tougher stance on China, particularly regarding the issues such as trade, technology, and human rights. Meanwhile, China has been expanding its global economic influence through the Belt and Road Initiative, as well as others. You know, they are raising concerns among Western countries about its growing power. Today, right now, we can see what's been happening. I covered that in a recent video, and if you haven't already, you've got to subscribe because I show you what's happening with China, and that has direct impact on the West. So let's Keep an eye on it. Let's pay attention. The situation has been income, become increasingly tense with each side blaming each other for the issues. Tensions have risen over things such as national security, human rights, and technology. Experts warn that the situation could lead to a new Cold War with economic and political implications for the world. That's where we're going to stop for a moment while I show you the first article for today. And I'm going to expand on this and highlight so much that is happening right here and now, beginning with the US and China plunge further into a spiral of hostility after tiptoeing towards reproachment. Any fence mending now has been postponed. So we had seen this before. The tensions got real hot. They kind of eased off for a little bit there, but it is anything but right now. A lot of people are really concerned about it on the inside because of so many things, including Taiwan, which we will discuss today. One of the major challenges facing the US and China and the EU is finding a way to balance economic and strategic interests. Each side has its own priorities and objectives, which can sometimes conflict with those of the others. For example, the US is concerned about China's growing economic power and its potential implications for global security, while China sees the US as trying to contain its rise and limit its technological influence. And that's part of what we'll see with semiconductors. And I wanna get into that today. But first, let's talk about the crazy debt situation that's happening in China. If you stick with me, I'm gonna show you what's happening with the geopolitical problems of, of China and, and the West, and how this is really going to unravel in 2023 and beyond. So let me show you China planning to revamp finance and tech oversight. In my opinion, this is actually a backwards step for the stock market in China. I showed two things, two very important things uh, not that long ago when we were talking about China, and I said the stock market will do well if number one, lockdowns end, and number two, they kind of ease up on all the restrictions. They got one, the lockdowns are not as bad as they were, certainly. Number two, doesn't look so good, okay? So let's just quickly go into that. You could see China plans to overhaul the financial regulatory system by consolidating aspects of the central bank and securities regulator under a new entity while doing away with the existing banking regulator. They want to tighten up, and I could see kind of why they would want to do that. Um, they want stability and so on. But what I believe this means is that the government has more control over these industries. And uh, part of that, uh, by the way, is that they have the oversight of scientific research. So now they have more control over the scientific research. You can deal with that on your own, okay? You know what I mean right there? Okay, next aspect is that China's local governments boost revenue by selling land to their own entities. You did hear me correctly. They're selling land to their own entities, okay? So the official think tank report hints at the extent of the financial woes in crucial economic engine for the country. So you know that this is the biggest asset globally. And uh, my goodness, I can't believe it. But what we're seeing here is a $62 trillion 
asset, and that is uh, China's real estate, $62 trillion. So of course, they're going to be concerned when it goes and has a problem. They need to continue to push this up, and they really struggled to do that. And so they got into a little bit of a uh, you know, problem, let's just say that. Cash-strapped local governments in China artificially boosted their revenues last year by selling swaths of land to their own investment vehicles, according to an official think tank. This is huge. This is big news. Uh, I want to unwrap this in future videos. This is what I have for you today. We don't really know enough. We don't know enough about what happens in China. And that's all because of the way that they have control. Like you're going to see the scientific research. They have more control now. Financial regulation, they have more control now. So that means less information available to the public. So we won't know exactly, but any information that comes up, I'll keep you updated, that's for sure. Look at the amount of debt that China has today. It's shy of 300%. Uh, you're talking about 280% or so. That is extreme. To, on, on any measure, 300% it is uh, near that record high. And how are they going to get out of that? They have no intention on doing that, uh, but they're just going to grow at the fastest pace that they possibly can. China's cities struggle under trillions of dollars of debt. Financial obligations built up during 2020 weigh on growth as China's legislator meets to address economic needs. How are they ever going to get out of this position? I really don't know. You could see, though, it's not a China problem. The whole world is in the same problem. And that's kind of where the, the issue lies. It's that if it was just one, if it was just the U.S., let's say, well, OK, that can kind of balance out. There are ways to do that. But when every country is in the same circumstance, then you have an issue. And I do believe that we are building, building, building. And what happens when you blow a bubble or blow a balloon? As you build it, as you blow it up, it gets thinner. It gets more fragile. And just one little pop and the whole thing makes a mess all over your face. So this is what's happening today. And I believe that we're heading into the next part of this video. You see, build up the debt, build up the tensions. We got problems. I got problems with you, China. I got problems with you, EU. This is happening. Really, in many cases, they're just pointing the finger. Oh, we have problems in our own countries. And they say, oh, it's their fault. It's their fault. But really, sometimes it's actually not. It's our own governments that create the problems within, and they are always trying to start a war. It's like a bully sometimes. But no country is innocent in that. They all do the same thing. We've never, though, uh, except since the financial crisis, essentially, we've never seen everything be in sync as the way it is today. That's part of the issue. Every country is doing the exact same thing at the same time. It builds up, and it causes a big problem. So here we are looking at the next aspect. I want to show you this. China's energy transition policy, essentially saying that China will stay with coal. They're not going to go away from it. They're going to keep building their country on coal as well as the other energy. You know that, that that's a fact. But they're going to use coal and they're not going away from it because the number one priority for China, if you've ever heard of anybody inside the government, if you've ever dealt with people inside you will find that they have the same policy, and that is number one thing is to take as many people from the rural areas, bring them up into cities. That's the plan. That's the policy. Get the growth going. They need to get their economy happening, demographics problems, and so on. They're trying to reverse some of that. It's going to be a big struggle. They got 1.4 billion people. It's not as if that can happen overnight. Interesting to say the least. The U.S. imposed semiconductor export controls on China. This is big because if you look at what had occurred, the U.S. is basically saying, hey, we do not want China to excel in this category and we're going to be able to punish them. We're going to do this so that they cannot take the advantage over us, national security factors, as well as economic. Well, you have the Netherlands stepping in. I've been talking about this a little while. They're officially on board and it is being put in place. Pentagon sees giant cargo cranes as a possible Chinese spying tool. I don't know if there's any legitimacy to this. The Pentagon is saying it. And I just wanted to bring that to you because there's like every category is happening right now. You also have this. China says it's puzzled after a report from Germany might ban Huawei from parts of the 5G mobile network. So while the US might have said no thanks, we don't want any part of that. 
and uh, Germany said, yeah, let's do it. Let's build it up. Now they seem to be going in the other direction. So you can see that there are two factions that are being formed right now very clearly. you got the West and you got the East. And that has become a big issue. It's kind of like the Middle East is, is where that line is. And that's a problem because these tensions are building. We're building towards something. And I do believe that they want a war to happen. The U.S. wants Europe to stand up to China. Europe says, not so fast. I talked about this a while ago, and I've been highlighting this, that Europe wants China. China wants Europe. They want to be able to ship their products to China. They want to do business together with China. They want to send products back and forth, and they want the financial investment from, from Chinese people. And uh, so they're not really too keen on saying no. They're, you know, they're not necessarily best buddies, but they love the money. And so this is what happens. This is, a, you know, creating a rift in between these countries, in between, um, you know, these factions. We have this as well. Remote corner of Taiwan confronts wartime scenario, life with no internet. And essentially, this is just a place, little island, uh, that's very close to China, but all, you know, under the control of Taiwan. And what they're saying here is that they're just living day to day under the threat of war. So this is a big problem for a lot of people. And this happens to be like the one place that's, you know, so extreme, uh, you know, with these circumstances. The leader of China calls for more quickly elevating armed forces. They're, they're setting up for war. That's all I'm trying to say. And you could see that the U.S. doesn't want to separate its economy from China's. Hey, we don't. We we want to stay. We want to stay friendly. That's all they're saying. We want to stay friendly. I'm not so sure. They uh, want to be too friendly. Uh, both sides seem to be hitting back. Let me tell you. And this is just talking about the fact that their temperatures are rising in China very early. And what that means essentially is that if you remember last year, temperatures. Just like in the United States, China dealing with the same thing is that all of these places are running dry. That makes it more difficult to, you know, if they're utilizing that for transport or, or any other means, if their water reservoirs are running dry, they got less for the, for the people, less for farming, less for everything. So that's a problem as well. So I believe on every single level, things are very concerning. You're going to see those three, the triangle we talked about at the beginning. That's something that will evolve over the next literally weeks and months. So we're going to pay attention to that. I would be very concerned if I was an investor looking at China's equities right now, particularly with tech, the government may clamp down here. So I don't know what kind of ceiling there is uh, with the stocks in that regard. Watch what happens between all of these countries and, of course, Europe. Uh, looking at them, it, they're kind of in between it all. So if you found this video informative, please don't forget to subscribe because each and every day I bring you the latest and greatest information. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.